Ty's one of our favorite over on um, Twitter. You guys should go follow Ty. She writes for Occupy Democrats, by the way. So go check out her articles at Occupy Democrat. We've actually featured a couple of her articles here on the Tony Michaels podcast because I think she's wrote about those Oath Keepers that I keep talking about. I keep talking about the Oath Keepers. I keep talking about the Proud Boys. I keep talking about Roger Stone. And I keep talking about that goddamn decision made out in California by Car- Judge Carter about John Eastman's emails and how they were not protected by attorney-client privilege because John Eastman and Donald Trump committed a conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding. That is why Judge Carter decided that those are criminal, and that is why they're not protected by attorney-client privilege. A federal judge has ruled that Donald Trump and John Eastman committed crimes. Conspiracy to obstruct Congress. Official proceeding is the actual charge or the actual crime that he accuses them of in his in his judgment. On the fact that these emails that they were they were planning the Cheeto dust kangaroo coup are not protected by attorney client privilege. But that is significant. And the reason why that's significant is, again, and and when questioning Marjorie Taylor Greene, the petitioner's lawyer even brought up martial law, which I thought, oh, man, maybe he's going to come in here with some real evidence, some real evidence, because there is actual evidence out in the open in the public that we have. That shows that the Oath Keepers were waiting. They were waiting on an order from someone. To. Order the QRF, which is the stockpile of weapons across the Potomac in Virginia, to bring them across the river so that way they were armed. That way they could commit uh, commit a coup <clears throat> by Donald Trump declaring martial law and deputizing the Oath Keepers. Stuart Rhodes was in charge of that QRF or that stockpile of weapons. He was waiting for the order. And it just so happens that one of his lieutenants who has pled guilty to conspiracy of sedition, which is important when you talk about the QRF and the stash of weapons, he was protecting Roger Stone. He was standing right next to Roger Stone the entire the entire time the insurrection was happening on January 6th. Now, it's known that Roger Stone has a personal connection with the president and probably has a personal line with the president where he could either call or text him. I don't know. I would imagine that Roger Stone maybe even had burners on him that day. Who knows? I guess maybe we'll find out in a court of law one of these days. But also that is what is significant is that Stuart Rhodes, the founder of the Oath Keepers, who, whose lieutenant was protecting, standing next to Roger Stone the entire time the insurrection was happening, met with Enrique Tario the day before. And the context there is that they met in a parking garage in Washington, D.C., where Enrique Tario was ordered not to be. It was unlawful for him to be in the city of Washington, D.C. at that moment. And there was a, a, a protest where he had burned a sign off of a church. They tore a sign down off a church, and they'd ordered him out of the city. But he came in anyways to meet with Stuart Rhodes the founder of the Oath Keepers, where his lieutenant would be standing next to Roger Stone waiting for orders, apparently, from someone to give to Stuart Rhodes that martial law had been that had been declared and that the stack, stockpile weapons could be brought across the Potomac to stop those Antifa and Black Lives Matter and even Marjorie Taylor Greene in her testimony here in open court brings up Antifa and Black Lives Matter. That racist fuck. Of course, they 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 do this shit where they conflate these two issues. And the reason why is because they wanted Black Lives Matter and Antifa there that day. But they weren't. But they wanted them there. They wanted so bad for Antifa and Black Lives Matter to commit violence. So that way, it was very easy for the President of the United States at the time, the Cheeto Dust mobster, Grandpa Poopy Pants himself, Donald Trump, to declare martial law and to deputize the Oath Keepers so they could arrest members of Congress. And it is very important to know 
that Stuart Road and Stuart Rhodes and Enrique Tario met the night before. And the reason why it's super, super, super duper significant is because the Proud Boys were supposed to be the security force that was going to be next to Roger Stone that day. But they switched it for some reason. For some reason, the Proud Boys decided they wouldn't protect Roger Stone, that the Oath Keepers were. I wonder if it's because the Proud Boys didn't have the stockpile of weapons. It was the Oath Keepers who had the possibility of bringing the QRF across the Potomac. But the reason why, also, that the Proud Boys are significant in that they ha- were in cahoots with Roger Stone is one of the people that have charged an indictment with Enrique Tario is another lieutenant, but of the Proud Boys. And he has pled guilty to the conspiracy. Listen to this. The conspiracy to an obstruct an official proceeding. That is very, very, very important. Very important in this case. When we watch that that a judge, a federal judge in California, Judge Carter, says that John Eastman and Donald Trump were committing a crime, that's why they're not protected by attorney-client privilege, and the crime that he thinks they've committed that would not protect their attorney-client privilege is the conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding. And we have the Proud Boys pleading guilty to that exact charge. This is not, this is not, this is not um, hard to understand. It's not hard to follow the bouncing ball here. We know this out in public now. And Marjorie Taylor Greene has done nothing more today than to maybe, maybe keep herself on the ballot, but only to reveal to us the real plans of January 6th. She lays it out when she's asked about martial law. And of course they tried to cover their tracks. Of course they did. Of course she made videos. The President of the United States made a video in the Rose Garden trying to cover his tracks when they knew it wasn't going to work. And when they knew it wasn't going to work is when Mike Pence did refuse to leave the Capitol. When he refused to leave and he refused to go along with the Cheeto Dust Kangaroo coup and his, his role in it, Mike Pence refused to not do the thing that he was that he was constitution constitutionally set out to do was his duty was to preside over the proceeding where the states would certify the vote that they had already certified folks all mike pence was doing was opening up the oscar envelope and reading the results this objection shit that she's talking about Oh, Democrats have objected before. It is the right of a member of Congress to vote to object to a certification. She is correct. That is your right. You do have that right as a congressperson. But that doesn't mean that it's going to happen. And just because you have the right doesn't mean you have an alternative which is what she was talking about in one of those videos that was shown when she didn't recall. I don't recall if that's me. I don't know. I fuck that. My memory just went blank. 